Hi, I'm Jen Drummond. Welcome to Seek Your Summit. As a mom, a business owner, and the first female to climb the seven second summits, I realize that the mountains we climb are a part of our success. And it is up to us to go beyond that success into a life of significance. Welcome back to the Seek Your Summit podcast. Right now we are in the Break Proof book series, and today I'm going to cover chapter two, which is called Fully Commit or Don't Climb the Mountain. And yes, you still need to buy the book. I'm just giving you extra stories to fill in and illustrate the points a lot deeper. And remember, these episodes are a lot shorter than my traditional interview episodes. So might not be the best episode to go for a run for because it's not going to be that long. But today we're getting into chapter two, which is fully commit or don't climb the mountain. This concept was introduced to me at a very, very young age. When I was in gymnastics, my coach would always say, commit or don't do the trick. Commit or don't do the trick. And it was really important for me to have that because when you're on those balance beams, if you have any hesitation whatsoever, you're going to miss the trick and not land it. It can end up injuring yourself. So that's probably the first time I learned fully commit or don't climb. Really got solidified into my being when I was in college. So I went to Hope College in Holland, Michigan. Very great school. Highly recommend it. And I had a friend who graduated a year ahead of me. And this friend got a job in finance and convinced me that I should get a job in finance as well because I have expensive tastes and it'd be a way to be able to afford my lifestyle. And so I had one more year left of school, but he's like, hey, they're hiring now. Like, figure out how to graduate. I said, okay, fine. I'll figure out how to graduate. So I interviewed for this company. They gave me a job and I went to the registrar of my school. They figured out how I could take classes over the summer and then do an internship and be able to graduate a year early. So now I just had to sell my parents on the concept. So I remember going home and telling my parents like, hey, I got this job. I'm going to graduate from college early. I worked it out with school. This is what it's going to look like, blah, 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 blah. And my parents were like, finance? You sure? Okay, but listen, you're young. So if you graduate from school a year early, you have to stay at this job for one year, no matter what. I was like, okay, no problem. I'm like planning on living at this job forever. One year is going to be no big deal. So everything fell into place. And I remember showing up to this job for the first day. I walked in early and I'm like, hi, I'm Jen. I'm the new financial advisor. And the lady at the front of the office was super nice. She's like, yeah, let me give you an office tour. So she showed me where the bathrooms were in the kitchen and office meetings and all these different details. And then there's this huge room that had whiteboards everywhere with like numbers and stats and things going on. And then a whole bunch of tables that had phones and phone books and chairs. And she's like, hey, why don't you go sit over there? I'm like, oh, no, no, I'm Jen. I'm a financial advisor. I'm not call center. And she goes, sweetheart, how do you think you get your clients? I was like, oh, I don't know. She's like, yeah, you call. You're going to call through those phone books and get people to come in. And those will be your financial advising clients. Yeah, I didn't really figure that out in the interview process and didn't really think about that during the entire time I was excited about this new job. So for my first week in this career, I heard no more times than I'd ever heard it in my entire life. And in fact, I went home every day crying because I heard the word no so many times to the point that the second week I went into work, I excused myself and called Hope College in my car. I said, hi, I'm Jen. I recently graduated. I was kidding. I don't want to graduate. I'd like to come back, get another degree. And school had already started. And so they said, hey, Jen, like we can try to figure out something at semester, but you graduated. You don't just like come back in and take courses. There was no way I was going to call my parents and say, just kidding. I quit my job. I'm a week and a half in. Like it was not an option. So instead, I went to the store, I bought a calendar, and I circled when my 365th day would be because that's when I was going to quit this job. And so I knew like every day I had to go in there and make these phone calls and do this thing. And I was committed for that year. And the gift of commitment gives you energy not to negotiate with your commitment anymore because that's already been decided. 
Now your energy gets to be redirected into things like, how do you make it fun? How do you make it successful? How do I go home from work without crying every single day? And it really taught me how to detach from the no, systematize the system, build habits, and really start just doing the work. And I ended up being extremely successful at it. My first year out of college, I remember making more money than my parents made. And I was like, oh, wow, this is just a numbers game. They're not saying no to me. They're saying no to the concept. And I was able to work through it, make it fun, as fun as cold calling can be, and have success. So when it came to mountaineering and it was time to climb these mountains, I knew I had to fully commit to them to have success. That didn't mean I didn't turn around. Like things weren't safe or didn't feel great or the weather started to turn. I could turn around, but that just meant I'd come back another time. But I was committed to this pursuit. So it allowed me to figure out ways to have fun. And in the book, I talk about Mount Logan in this chapter. So I'm not going to cover that today in this podcast, but I will cover another mountain experience that I had. As you know, I climbed Mount Everest to train for K2. There's a section on Mount Everest called the Lhotse Face. The Lhotse Face is like a 3,700 foot Stairmaster outdoors in the elements. It can be amazing if the weather's perfect and it can be terrible if it's not. And you can have all versions of weather in between during that entire climb because it does take quite a few hours. And our team was getting ready to go up the section. And I will let you know that most people who climb this section, it's their least favorite part of Everest. It's just not anything very visually stimulating. And it's pretty much a trudge, one step after another. And I knew that. And I knew my whole team knew that. And so we decided to make this experience different. We took turns leading on the Lotse face. Whoever was in front led the group. And they led the group by either song, jokes, stories, whatever they wanted to do to just keep our mind away from the struggle that we were in. And then when they were tired or exhausted or done with their stories, they would go to the back of the group and somebody else would step up to the front and then they would lead through th song, story, jokes, all the different things. And that actually ended up being one of the best experiences we had. And it's still my favorite section of Mount Everest because we giggled our whole way through an outdoor Stairmaster that is typically everybody's hell. So when you fully commit to your goals, just allows you to play with them and have a little more fun and get to the top. So when I think of fully committing to something, I really break it down into two parts. One, we have the commitment part, which means we're gonna hit obstacles, we're gonna have setbacks, we're gonna have things that are gonna make this adventure exciting. And then the other part is the discipline part. The discipline part is I'm doing this thing, whether it's hard, whether I feel like it, whether I want to or not, because I know by doing it, I'm going to fulfill my commitment. And I know when I fulfill my commitment, I'm going to be happy with myself. My confidence is going to soar and I'm going to achieve the things I set out to achieve. So when you start with those understandings, the thing that you can do with discipline is build habits. So when I set goals for climbing, I became very disciplined in the habit of it and built it into a routine. So every day, no matter what, I made myself do 2,000 step-ups. I had a 12-inch step, and I would go up and down, and that was one step. So it took me, after I got good at it, about 25 to 30 minutes to do these 2,000 steps if I did them in one fellow swoop. But sometimes I was busy, so I'd have to break them up into different parts of the day. Sometimes I could be on a Zoom call and do them during that entire call and nobody knew I was getting them done, but they got done. If it was a hard day, it was 11 p.m. at night, I didn't have those 2,000 step-ups done yet, I would force myself to do those 2,000 step-ups at 11 p.m. because it gave me confidence knowing that no matter what, I got 2,000 step-ups every day. Now, of course, most days had a lot more exercise and fitness components to it, but at least I had my bare minimum that was moving me closer to my summit. So whatever goal you're chasing or trying to achieve, figure out what is one thing that you can do that becomes a habit, that becomes a routine, that is the absolute minimum that gets you closer to your goal. Something that really helps when you fully commit to your goal 
is figure out ways to make it fun. I learned this accidentally. When we were climbing Mount Logan, we were in a horrible storm. And when you're in horrible storms, you typically wear either a yellow, orange, or pink lens on your goggle because it works better in the daylight because you don't have the sun to reflect off as much. And so I was wearing pink lens glasses. Well, these pink lens glasses made everything that I looked at kind of a pink hue. And so when it started snowing, I felt like I was in a cotton candy machine and I started singing songs and I was thinking about the game Candyland and I was thinking of that song, Watermelon Sugar High, and like all this happiness was happening. Well, my alarm went off on my watch. And so that was a note to say, hey, it's time to stop and eat. So we stopped and we ate and I bumped off my glasses and I realized I was in this gray, white out, horrible snowstorm and all my energy was zapped this fast. Nothing changed. I had been in the snowstorm the hour before. I was going to be in the snowstorm the hour coming up. But what had changed is my perspective. And sometimes it's just something like a pink lens glass that allows you to look at things with a cotton candy land and a different perspective and a different energy into what you're doing. So anything that you're taking on, I promise you, if you're having fun, it's going to be a lot easier to succeed than if you're making everything hard and stressful and challenging. So when you take something on, figure out where you can add fun to it because I promise you it will help you climb your mountain. When you're fully committing to your goals, it's very important to be very clear on what you're doing. So I was climbing mountains. I was going to climb Everest. I was going to climb K2. I was going to climb whatever. I was building a business. I was raising children. I had these different goals in these different categories. And it was very clear of who I wanted to be and what I wanted to achieve. If I want to be a patient mom, I have to check in with myself on a regular basis. Am I doing things a patient mom does? Am I allowing my kids the five minutes it takes them to tie their tennis shoes? Or am I rushing in trying to tie them for them so we can get out the door faster? With business, I wanted to run the company. So first I worked for a company. And then I realized, okay, what do I need to know to be able to run a company? And I would study videos and interview people at night so that I could fill in the gaps and gain the skill that I needed. So one day when I was ready to run a company, I wasn't doing that for the first time. I'd already practiced in my mind and had recruited people to help me do this thing. Which leads into another part of fully committing to something. When you fully commit to something, you make sure that you have the support necessary to get to your goal. That could look like mentors, cheerleaders, people that you talk to to unload things that aren't working and problem solve with. There's really very few mountains that we ever get to the top by ourselves. So who are you surrounding yourself with and what are you normalizing to make this commitment that much easier to achieve? I remember going to a business luncheon and everybody owned a company. I was the only person there that was an employee somewhere else. That group normalized owning a company. It was abnormal to be an employee. We start hanging out with people that have that mindset. You start absorbing that mindset and you realize, like, why wouldn't I own a company? Everybody I know owns a company. That's the thing you do. That's what's normal. So when you fully commit to something, you want to normalize the thing that you're doing. When I was training for Everest, I talked to Everest climbers. I trained with a coach that trained people for Everest. We talked about it all the time. It took away the crazy of it and made it normal. So when you commit... Make sure that you're committing with all your resources, all your time, and setting yourself up for success. All right, so we fully commit to this climb, and we've talked about things that support us and help make it easier to commit to whatever we said we're going to do. But let's not breeze over the fact that there are times to quit. There are times to turn around, and it just doesn't make sense to continue. But you can't let that judgment be emotional. So for us, when we were climbing Mount Logan, we had to turn around at one point. We had to turn around because the weather was going to be so dangerous that it wasn't safe for us to continue. And while we wanted to climb the mountain, the real wind was coming home to our families. So that was always number one priority, safely returning home. When you're building a business and you're going out on these ideas and you're stretching your budget thin, 
you have to make it all the way back to the office. You can't blow all your money on whatever that project is because then the company could go bankrupt. The top is only halfway. I think about that all the time. Of how many businesses might still be in business if they gave themselves enough runway to try an idea and make sure they had capital to make it all the way home if that idea didn't launch like they expected. So for me, if I'm thinking of whether I want to continue something or not, I normally make sure I check in with myself for about three months. And if every single day during those three months, I'm checking, yes, I like this thing. No, I don't like this thing. And if at the end of three months, there's more no's than yeses, then it's time to stop that thing and start something new. I did this with triathlon. I got into triathlon. I liked it. I didn't love it. And then Every time I did a race, I felt amazing. So I'd sign up for another race and another race. And then one day I was in the swim of a race and the swim was horrible. And I checked in with myself. I'm like, I don't even like swimming. And so for three months, I continued to swim. Seven days out of those 90, I liked swimming. The other 83, I didn't like it. And I was just so in the habit of doing that activity that I didn't even stop to check in to see if I was really enjoying myself doing it. So I gave myself permission to quit triathlon. I stayed with running and then I got into mountaineering. So for you, I think you really know in your heart of hearts, whether you're quitting something because it's emotional or it's hard or it's just frustrating at the moment, or if you're quitting something because you realize, hey, this isn't my passion anymore. I wanna bring my energy back into myself and pursue something different. So if you want to quit something and it is not your mountain, set up some kind of system that takes away the emotional component and makes it more black and white and rational so that you don't ever look back and be like, oh man, I wish I would have continued. So that's our topic, fully commit or don't climb the mountain. In the book, there's a lot of questions that you're asked and there's different exercises that you can do to help you determine if this is a mountain that you should be climbing and how to commit to it. So next week on this episode, we're going to get into chapter three, which is embrace the power of imperfect starts. See you then.